For much of Benita Altier's 30-year career as a veterinary technician, one question came up again and again. Should I stay or should I go? You see, she loved being a veterinary technician, but the low pay and the lack of benefits were driving her to consider other career paths. She got by for a long time without having to switch careers, but when she became a single mother of two, something had to give. You know, many different times I thought, you know, maybe I should go back to school to become a veterinarian, or maybe I should go back to school and become a human dental hygienist. But I guess I always realized that I really wanted to uh, work with animals and, you know, also having a family myself would have made going to vet school a very difficult pursuit at the time. So it just wasn't the right fit for me. I became a single parent. Um, you know, halfway through that 30 years of work. And at that point in time, you know, it was pretty bad. It's hard enough to go through a divorce and have your, you know, children not with you um, all the time like you're used to. And I was always extremely hands-on mom, you know, but um, I did want our dad to be in their life, so I had to share the responsibility. But I remember when gasoline went up to like $4 a gallon, and I literally had like a little car that got like the best gas mileage you could get. And I literally couldn't put gas in my car and I had to start riding a bus, which was like a, added about an hour each way to my commute, which was really hardship for me because I really valued the time I needed to spend with my daughters. My first job out of tech school, I was paid, I think, $3.50 an hour and no benefits. Over the years, um, my salary really didn't really increase that dramatically considering how many years I've really been in this profession, even after obtaining my specialty. And getting a specialty is actually a very expensive pursuit. So that, you know, I realized that many different times along the way, I probably should explore a different career. I uh, realized my passion for dentistry, especially after we got dental radiographs in 2001, I decided to get my specialty in dentistry and it really changed my life. I had, uh, you know, worked so hard to get there and I passed my exam on the first try. I was really excited. And I'd been doing some teaching with a board of veterinary dentists to kind of, you know, get my feet wet on teaching. And she just really believed in me. And she actually recommended to a company that provided continuing education that I become one of their speakers. And I was like, wow, this is going to be really hard. They want me to create like six to eight hours of content. I'd be the only speaker all day. Like, how can I possibly do this? I've never been a public speaker, but I was like, well, how can I not do this, right? And through that opportunity came many more opportunities and eventually I was able to rent a three bedroom house and my daughter had her own bedroom <laughs> that was living with me more full time at that point. The other one went off to college and I just was like, wow, this is, I finally like gotten somewhere by myself. It really was because of the ability to go out and teach. Um, because in my own hospital, you know, I mean, although I stayed there for about nine years after I got my specialty, I, you know, just got a very small raise and, and really not any new special bonuses or big opportunities, you know, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was really relevant in my practice of dentistry as well as the fact that I really was, I guess, loyal and attached to, you know, contributing to that hospital. I have uh, exclusively started just teaching and consulting and traveling and going into practices, teaching at conferences, um, teaching internationally. I had the opportunity to go to China twice last year to do that. Um, since January of 2017, I've been out of my general practice situation um, just doing that. So I've been able to write and have works published in journals and books and really um, contribute. I also, um, for the past Four or five years, I've been really active in my state tech association as their serving secretary, as well as serving on the board for the Academy of Veterinary Dental Technicians. So I spend you know, a lot of my time trying to give back to the profession and really help technicians because I was where they were or are, and I would like them to see the light too at the end of the tunnel that it's possible if they kind of take charge of their situation and, and become educated, you know, because it really is about getting that level of expertise that's recognized. 
We're so grateful to Benita for being open and gracious with her personal story. Have you had similar experiences in your career? Let us know on social media and through email, spark at navc.com. And if you haven't yet, see the other community stories in this series, Captain Kelly Willards and Dr. Cindy Barnes. Thank you for watching.